Blog Talk Radio. Do you ever stop to wonder if people really knew the truth about what was going on in the world? If they would be any different? Because quite frankly, Normal abandoned me a long time ago. My name is Dakota Francis. I am the specialist of the strange and fucked up. You'll never see the world the same way once you stick with me. Nothing is off limits. And you'll never know what world I'll be coming from for each episode. Listen in. And wait hey, for your world to be changed is... forever. Okay, I really got to adjust that so I can hear it better. Anyway, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Dakota Franson, and welcome to another episode of a specialist of the strange. I don't know if you can hear it, but I'm sucking on a cough trap right now to avoid last week's hack fest. I am deeply, 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 I am so sorry about that. Like I said on the last episode, I was at a kid's party with uh, very small children, and uh, pretty sure I caught something from them. And it's one of those damn strains that uh, leaves you a hacking mess for a couple weeks. So bear with me. Now, last week, I tried to talk about making smart decisions about your life. And I just wanted to elaborate on something. Oh, oh dear God. All right. The truth is, I uh, lost a friend last week to a car accident. I hadn't seen her in a few years, but she might not even remember me. But I was wanting to use this opportunity to try to talk about trying to do the right thing in life. Be careful about calculated that. She may have been distracted by something which caused her to flip her car. I don't know all the details. I'm trying not to say, oh, she did this. Oh, she did this. But anyway, that's what that was about. This week, I wanted to talk about thoughts on love and loss because something happened that made me want to talk about a few things. Before I get started on this show... Today was the opening day for the Sony Marvel film Venom. Oh, my God. If you managed to see it, I highly recommend. It is awesome. It is a thrill ride. It is funny. Venom was fucking badass. I really hope that they're able to continue making more because, spoiler alert, if the Venom verse doesn't completely collapse and somehow the rights are reverted back to Sony, I mean, back to the Marvel powerhouse, which could very well happen. You never know. I really hope they can somehow continue that storyline because it was a really good film. I know a lot of people are trying to make fun of Tom Hardy for his accents, but he did a good job. He's a really good actor. I liked it. So anyway, this week I titled Thoughts on Love and Loss. Because it seems like we treat relationships, we treat companionship a lot like illicit substances that we are trying to encourage ourselves to stupidly, stupidly put in our body. 
or like how a bunch of people try to justify weed. Now, if you have seizures or if you're battling cancer and the marijuana is actually assisting in your treatment, it is something like that it is absolutely medicinally necessary for you to take that. These comments are not directed towards you guys. Okay? That is what I'm trying. That is, I want to elaborate that right now because I do believe there might be something to the medicinal rumors. But, but the fact that it remains, it's still illegal, or at least in my state. I know a lot of places are trying to legalize it, but never mind. The thing about weed is about the stupid decisions we make in relationships. Now, trust me, I've been there. And in fact, the discussion for this show was brought on by someone who was the focus out of said stupid ass relationships. I'm going to confess that I have recently been made aware that my most recent fling has become engaged. And she tried to use that to stir up a fight and say that I was all alone, she found happiness, and a bunch of bullshit. Now, because of that awkward breakup period where you end up cyber-stalking your ex, don't fucking judge me, we all do it. No, it's not the healthiest thing, but it happens. I know for a fact now, this relationship has only lasted about four months. And, yes, I'm kind of kiboshing my ex here, but I believe this brings up an excellent opportunity to open up a discussion for maybe some of our younger viewers to hopefully try to make the right decisions about who they end up with in life and not try to let all of the emotions run through our head as a result of either a relationship, a relationship gone south, or maybe in the most extreme, losing a loved one permanently, uh, regardless of what your faith beliefs might be. Now, I posted a question on social media to open up a discussion with you all. What I asked was about how long, well, in a relationship, about how long after you've been dating with someone be about a good time to consider marriage. Not necessarily go through with it, not necessarily go over the whole ceremony, just maybe start thinking about putting a ring on it. Me personally, Depending on circumstances, I believe this is something that should be taken a case-by-case scenario. Me, personally, I believe that relationships should go through a period of turmoil. Now, why do I say this? Me, personally, I would, I'll be honest, I would like to get married one day. To the right person. However, I want to see shit go down before I even think about putting a ring on. And for those of you who may have been wondering, yes, this particular relationship that sparked this conversation, I thought about asking a mate. Ask her and marry me. But didn't work out, and quite frankly, seems like it was for the best. Now, you really shouldn't be putting time frames on this, but I believe roughly maybe six months since the relationship to a year at minimum. That's what I believe should be a good time frame before you start considering marriage. Now, I asked this question to a few people, and it didn't matter what dynamic. I didn't care 
if you were a kid still in high school or if you were in your 70s, <coughs> this is a topic that I thought I wanted to get a general perspective on. Now, a few of you agreed with me that unless you two have been friends for a long time before the relationship started, roughly a year is a good time before you start considering marriage. Some of you said two two years. Some of you said maybe three. Really depends on the situation. A couple of you said, oh, you should get married whenever it feels right. Yes and no. Because if you decide to make that much of an important life decision, when emotions are high, you're not exactly thinking through everything, and shit's going to go sideways real quick. (coughs) God damn it. Sorry about that. Anyway. And I do have some real-life examples to share. You might end up with someone abusive. You might end up with someone who who is actually a complete and total scumbag. I know ladies who have ended up with individuals apparently were wanted by the FBI for weapons and drug trafficking okay it's like I know people that have jumped into these type of relationships just for the fucking sake of having someone say I love you and I'll be honest if any of the my younger audience any of the kids I have helped over the years who I have told don't rush into relationships. It's honestly not big of a that big of a deal. It's these circumstances end up to really mess up life situations that I really don't want to see you guys end up having to deal with. I care about you guys a lot. I don't want to see you go through something shitty. Now, if you decide to go through with it, I'll support you no matter what. I've got your back. You respect me. You treat me nice, I treat you nice. That's the way I see it. Now, if I think something's going to happen to where you might get hurt, I'll say something and address my concerns. I believe that is a respectable position. And I wanted to include emotions that are brought up by a recent loss of a loved one. And trust me, There has been times where I was emotional because I had recently lost a loved one, and because my emotions were so high, things happened I'm not necessarily proud of, basically unnecessary arguments that escalated. In fact, I'm going to disclose this right now. Shortly after my grandfather passed away with cancer, uh, there was an incident where I was a freshman in high school at the time. It it wasn't right to pursue this. But there was an individual who had been attacking ladies in our school. And, yes, I went total alpha male. I could have handled the situation differently. Do I regret confronting him? No. I believe in taking a stand. I believe I'm kind of old-fashioned to where I believe men should step up and help a lady out if she's in a situation where she's going to end up hurt or some guy tries to attack her. And that's a stance I still believe with all these Me Too movements, that ladies 
don't count all of us out yet. Some of us do try do try to be halfway decent human beings and want to help out. But you gotta admit, some of you are kinda getting to the point of hostile to where even those of us who try to be respectful and try to be halfway decent human beings, uh, we're a little gun shy. Now back to the situation where I confronted this guy. Do I regret calling him out? No. Could I handle the situation differently? Because honestly, I told this dude that if I found out that he hurt another woman, I'd kill him myself. Because I told now, did I get in trouble for this? Yes, but I explained that I was concerned about some things, and I'll be honest, and I told him that I recently lost my grandfather to cancer. I'm not in the best mood right now. So that reduced the blow, and quite frankly, the everything didn't get put through all the way, so if I didn't show up for the the pass room, as they called it, which is basically a form of in-school suspension, probably wouldn't have done anything. But it was probably for the best that I gave myself some space from the situation. I haven't really seen the guy. I do apologize for going total alpha male. I could have handled the situation differently. I don't apologize for you acting like that. It may have been high school, but there's no fucking excuse. And I honestly hope this guy turns his life around. I really do. I haven't heard from him. Last I heard, he was in Arizona. So, regardless. But now sometimes, if channeled right, emotion, high emotions, from a new relationship, or even the loss of a loved one, if it was a breakup or a death, can lead to some really good things happening. A friend of mine, shortly after the breakup with this ex I was started this discussion with, shortly after that happened, a friend of mine heard about what happened. He said, you know what, dude? Take this time to focus on you. And you know what? That's what I did. I quit a job that I absolutely hated. Okay, I didn't hate it 100%. The people I worked with, they were all right once some shit got sorted out. But I hated a job. It was easy. It was fairly good pay. When I left it, I found a job that I enjoy. It's in line with the things I want to achieve. And while the transition period was a little rough, some good things are coming out of it. I'm happy with what happened. And I'm glad this girl left. Otherwise, I wouldn't have been able to push myself to do it to prove that I wasn't the asshole she was trying to turn me out into. But it remains the same. Do I hope that things work out for her? Yes. Do I think it's probably a dumb decision? Yes, but you never know. People tend to surprise you nowadays. I like to keep that option open. I like to do my best to see the good in the world and yada, yada, yada. Okay, the cough drops are barely keeping this shit back. Anyway, this is what I wanted to talk about because so many good people are completely fucking up their lives. And there's people that are in my life right now who kind of lean into the starting phases to these and I try to be there to the best of my ability for them. And I told them this is like, not that I see them making these bad decisions, but 
shit happens, and I just want to see you happy in the long run. And I believe everybody has the right to pursue the happiest. However, it just seems like <clears throat> not a lot of us are taking the time to try to be smart about the next move we make. Sometimes you got to take that jump. You got to take a leap of faith. And sometimes when you take that leap of faith, you're going to get stumbled. You're going to fall. You're going to get hurt. But I do hope that everyone does find happiness in their life to where they can go home at the end of the day. They can reach the end of their life and have minimal regrets. Be able to say, I did good. And to this ex, if by some chance you hear this show, I want to say this. I'm sorry for how things turned out. I really am. I hope this gentleman is what you're looking for. Please do not give up on the dreams that you had discussed with me. Follow them through. From what I understand about the situation, you may have to make some cutbacks. You may have to give some stuff up if you truly believe in anything you've ever told. I do hope the best for you. But I'm not alone. As for your commentaries, yeah, I can be a complete and total fucking jackass. I'll admit that. But when people actually tell me I'm being a jackass, if people actually are straightforward with me, I will do what I can to be better. And on things you were calling out on me, you were trying to make me into something I'm not. Whatever that was, and if you think I'm alone, <coughs> I'm going to tell you this. I got friends in my life who have my, who have helped me achieve things beyond my wildest dreams. I have people who I can consider family who have my back, irregardless of what happens. There are tens of thousands of people who have come to me, who I have done my best to help out, and who have told me later on in life, once their situations got settled, that I made a difference for them. So if by your definition of being alone falls under any of those circumstances, I am more than happy to be alone for the rest of my life. I would rather have what I have now. I would rather have everything that this is evolving into than anything that I tried to have with you. And you may think I'm a scumbag. You lost your chance for me to actually give a shit about what you feel. when you started attacking my family. And that, and those family that you tried to say were just as much of a jackass as me, they recently shared with me that he and his wife are pregnant. And they're naming that baby after me because of how much I've done for them. And it was the same stuff I was willing to do for you until you fucking stabbed me in the back. I promised that this episode wasn't going to be a kibosh against you, but you know what? Fuck you. I hope things work out for you. I really do. And if we meet again down the road, and I do hope that we can be friends. Because I did care about you. Well, you were asking me to put you in front of saving lives. You were asking me to cater to you, to constantly baby you when you tried to plead that you were an independent, strong woman. Roughly four months into our relationship, you started hinting at marriage to me. And you know what? 
I considered it. But because we were still in that butterfly phase, I knew that it would be the stupidest decision even back then. To the audience, I'm sorry that you had to hear this rant, but I feel this is something that needs to be said. And to somebody else who questions my motives, who tries to say that I'm some pathetic loser because I don't give in, you should really check about your own life before you start judging me. The last time I checked, nobody tried to kill themselves because I was because I wasn't trying to be a part of their life. Wow. That honestly felt good. That felt good. Sorry I had to go into that rant, but I thought that was important to say. I promise no more, and I hope by this next episode, this cough goes away. Join me next week as we are going to be talking about real-life supernatural tales. If you would like to call into the show for the next episode, if you would like to submit your own supernatural stories, (coughs) hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram. There's a link in the show description to a blog post that Takes to all sorts of sites that I'm help operational. Plus, they have some affiliate links, some really cool shit that you might be interested in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you can come back. Quit talking to me, you dirty lady. Sorry, it was an episode reminder that I need to wrap this up. So, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Tune in next time. I hope to see you there. Adios. Be kind to one another. I love you all, and good night. Bye.